And it's just another thing about drinking, which I'm, I'm something that I struggle with when it comes to DJ, something that I've not kind of got to grips with, but another quote here that was quite interesting, uh, question and quote, I get here on the screen. Uh, the question is, do you use substances to help you get in the zone when you DJ? And she says, no, never. I drink sometimes, but only a little. I let myself have one or two beers if it's not very late and I know I'm going to have to go to sleep time to go to sleep but i usually just drink water when i was starting out in berlin i didn't have to do to be to, to i didn't have to be in so in control because my friends was there so i was comfortable and at home when i started touring i had a lot of more responsibility it's a lot of work and a lot of money to organize a party or festival i want to respect that which is fucking awesome right um and i i really do um agree with that in some regard right i think when you start especially when your friends are booking you i know for me when i was playing in dawson which i i don't anymore at the moment you know mostly due to um other extenuating circumstances and sometimes you know due to the fact that i kind of i ran my course there and kind of you know i, I went, went past my sell by date but when you DJ around those kind of places, you'd go really hard and play the most ludicrous shit because usually, by and large, your friends were the ones that were booking you, right? So you're in a safe environment. Your friends are turning out to pie. There was no real, um, there was no real danger of you doing anything dumb or of you of the people not getting what you were playing. But I can imagine the moment you start touring, the moment you start playing in bigger venues, the pressure ramps up a lot because. As important as it, as great as it is that you've got an agent, you've got a manager, or that you get these big bookings, I'd imagine DJing is a lot like comedy, where there is there is a part of it where you can get far with association, right? With being given the right intro and stuff, but there is a moment where, or there is there will, there will come a point where if you're not good enough, you just stop getting booked, right? If people don't want to see you, people complain that you're shit, you just won't be good enough anymore, right? There's, you know, we've all seen the amount of DJs out there who kind of became records when they started becoming successful, and then people started complaining online, especially when resident vibes are comments are open. That's when you could get an idea of how people's acted when they were out DJing, and then you'd get you kind of see, you know, six months later, the person the DJ in question would then say, "Oh, I'm sober now. I'm trying to concentrate on my music." Because it reached a point where that stuff, 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 that sort of substance abuse starts to impact how you do the job but there's also another part of it that's kind of hard to deal with that i don't hear a lot of people talking with is the idea of being in a nightclub playing music especially a dark nightclub um you know it's somewhere in like some god forbidden area completely sober is really difficult around people who are you know drunk and high it's really hard to do and i know for me when i went when i was doing sober october and i was djing every week um, I found it really difficult to kind of, you know, just be, can remain sane in that kind of environment surrounded by so many fucked up people, especially because you're playing for four to six hours or let's say two to four hours a night that I'll usually do. Um, you're having to be around these people all the time. They're coming near you. They have no sense of personal space and shit. Just the usual drunk people stuff, right? It's really hard to kind of stay in the zone or be in state completely sober. You have to have a little tickle. Um, sometimes I'd have a shot. Or I'd have a, a couple of whiskeys just to kind of make me, just to kind of um, um, smooth up the edges. Because you know you know how you are when you're serving, you're in a bar. You're super um, tetchy, right? Um, you're aware of too many things. So you kind of sometimes, and then that can maybe ruin the mood for you and for the people around you. Because people can feel it, right? If you're feeling a little bit, you know, on edge and shit. But I kind of get what she's coming from in terms of, you know, the more sensitive you get, you maybe have to kind of curtail those things going forward. But let's continue with a quote. And she said, also, I need to be, um, I don't need to be wasted to get into the mood because I've been partying for so long. After this many years, it's not hard for me to get in the mood. I'm not saying that I'm always sober, but I don't need to get in the vibe. I'm already in it, which is true, right? I think when you come from a, a raver's point of view, I know for me when I went to, I went to Mixed Garage just the other day and I didn't really drink that much. I got a couple of beers and like I mentioned in the other podcast, you know, they turn to fucking warm custard quite soon after I put them in my pocket like an idiot, you know, of course, in your pocket jumping around um, it next to your skin boils. And then there you go. You've got a nice little warm IPA in, in your mouth. But I've realized in general, like I don't need to get fucked up or to be high to kind of enjoy a techno party. Right. I can, I, I'm there for the music. I'm there for the vibes. I can suddenly get into it just from dancing alone and kind of feeling the beat, closing my eyes, hearing the bass line, hearing how the person's mixing the next song coming in. I, I'm already in the zone. I don't need, I don't need any enhancements. I think, I think, the problem the thing that happens when you're a dj is that you start to get in the zone with the music you're playing the more prepared you are i find the more i've got, I made a, a note of the place i'm playing at what they want to hear the crowd the more i start to realize um somebody else, what's going on? the more i start to the more i start to get excited right about the place i'm going to play at. oh damn fell over about about the place i'm going to play and the things i'm going to play i'm just really really looking forward to it so that's me in a zone straight away. I don't need to um, enhance myself anymore. And I've always, re and I've realized too, you know, most of the time, if, you're, if you are enhancing yourself with any sort of drugs or alcohol, it does kind of, you know, throw you off course. 
Um, I've noticed some of my best sets, even though it's been annoying to be in the nightclub completely sober, have been when I've been completely sober. A couple of Coca Colas in me, or maybe a you know a little cheeky Zambuca shot or whatever, or a little cheeky shot of Jägermeister, and I'm done. I'm ready to go, right? I'm always, always, always ready to go. Um, again, I think it's hard in the beginning to do. Like I said, especially playing in bars and clubs, it's just a little bit hard to do. But I think by and large, it's probably the best practice to go forward. Um, she said, uh, look, even though I don't seem like a very serious person, I'm very respectable uh, when it comes to my work. I don't want to be drunk and not do my best. When I, when I DJ, I want everyone to work together on making things happen the best way. I think I take it seriously and I want everyone to take it seriously too. Uh, but in the end, it's a party. It's important that everyone lightens up, chills out about things that don't matter and won't ruin the party, which is really true, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a common conversation. We're all having this conversation together and we will add to it, which is why, you know, I go on and on about Berlin clubs, about the experience that you have in there, how they treat you and, you know, the attention they, 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 the amount of attention they put into picking the people that come into the club or don't come into the club. There is something about that that obviously leads overall to the actual overall ambiance of the actual space you're in and it makes it that much better and i think that's something i've always been very conscious of and i think if it can play any part in making the night better as being a dj in terms of you know making sure you're well behaved behind the decks and not acting like a fool and you're not super wasted and you're trying to read the room i think it really adds to the ambiance of it i think when someone you know i don't think i think the tone gets set when you know you've got really overzealous or overexcited bounces outside you've got a dickhead door person um, you've got a, a ridiculous wait time for the cloakroom and then you're coming into the room and you're seeing a DJ clang in, um, obviously, you know, wasted out of their heads or fucked off, or fu fucked off out of their heads and then it just makes the whole night completely fucked up and I'm not a fan of it. Although I do say, I would say this, I'd say being the opposite, like being a complete, being the same person in the, in the whole room of chaos is a good thing and I think a, a real good example of that is um, this DJ set I saw recently now um, on uh, Boiler Room of um jasper james have you seen that it's a fucking funny set actually let me see if i can find it jasper james is playing in some open air festival somewhere and i think you know he's really popular with the kids i'm, I'm, I'm he might even be in his home country in glasgow or, or scotland wherever it's from um and that's a real good example of somehow being able to operate in a fucked up environment and still be able to keep be on your p's and q's and it'd be an, old, an absolutely amazing video let me see if i can get it up now i think i found it this is a fucking quality, 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 quality video. Uh, let's see if I can find the actual bit that actually shows everything. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see if I can find it. Where is it? 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 Mm -hmm. There are so many people on here just absolutely fucked up their heads. That it's probably too much to find. But yeah, let's see here. Look at this. Just, just mad, mad people wasted here, right? Just, you know, look at, <laughs> look, look how close they are to him. Look, everyone's getting involved. They're trying to get pictures. Jasper James, there he is doing his damn thing. But look at it. <laughs> Amazing. I actually love it. But yeah, check that out. It's his new set. I think it's on Boiler Room now at the moment. Look how much the camera's shaking. People are absolutely round. Look where they start. Look, and I think they suddenly get everyone back behind, behind them to kind of get a bit more space. But yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> There's people taking selfies of him on here, but it's really funny. But yeah, anyway, I recommend you check out both things. Um, interview with Dr. Rubenstein and this um, really cool um, boiler room session with uh, Jasper James. And of course, I want to mention earlier with... Um, God, the answer, man. Maybe one of the best boardrooms I've seen in a long, long, long time. Really, really, really good, amazing one. I really recommend you check it out.